Welcome on board the program, Politics Today on Independent Television and Radio. Two issues are up for discussion today, reflective of the state of the nation. We'll begin by looking at the insecurity challenges that has continued to uh, bedevil this country unabated from the north to the east, east to the west. The situation seems to remain. That is not to say that the security agencies are not doing their best to tackle the problem. The one we can easily reflect on is the Okwama massacre, where about seven, 17 rather, soldiers were ambushed and killed. I mean, some of the insider stories are quite gory. But we know that about uh, seven or eight individuals have since been declared wanted by the security agencies. One of them, a traditional ruler, who we also gathered, has since turned himself in, saying he's been wrongly accused. We'll look at that. And then, of course, the dollar is um, getting weaker against the Naira. In other words, the Nigerian Naira is getting stronger, <laughs> gaining momentum <laughs> against the dollar. That should bring some cheering news. But when I wise to go to market, the prices hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, prices of goods are still increasing. So what is going on? What's responsible? What needs to be done so we can actually feel the impact of the dollar falling in the prices of commodities in Nigeria? I have a very large panelist for this discussion, a man of integrity and caliber who has seen it all and will be giving us that very, very useful insight into this program. As usual, our studio line will be open so you can also call and be part of the discussion. Let me welcome Reverend Canon Timothy Igodaro. He's a researcher, a scientist, public affairs commentator. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for inviting me. We also have with us here Barrister Gentleman Amego, a grassroots politician and other statesman, public affairs commentator. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Duke. We have with us here Bishop Osadolo Oche, uh, the Executive Director uh, of Human Rights Advocate. Thank you for joining us on the program. God bless you. Thank you for having me. We also have here Sir Adams Aliyo, a veteran journalist, public relations expert, and of course, uh, a legal practitioner. It's a delight to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, you gave you us. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me just start off with uh, uh, Reverend Canon Timothy Igodaro. <laughs> the insecure situation in Nigeria is something that has continued to be of great concern. Just uh, last week, the governors of our state had to cry to the presidency to come to the aid of the state because, according to him, Bandits are gaining grounds on a daily basis. Yes. I mean, uh, we're just uh, recovering from the nightmare of over 170 children that were kidnapped, who have since been released. I mean, what do you make of this trend? It doesn't, doesn't mean that uh, our security agencies are not able to meet these challenges in the board proactively before they escalate or they manifest event eventually. Oh. <coughs> Now, <clears throat> to speak to that, any of us who have studied physics, we talk of friction. Friction is relatively independent of the surface area in contact if the normal reaction remains constant. What means? The surface area of contact does not really matter. But what matters? The normal reaction. Is it constant? Now, the territory of Nigeria has not increased. In 1960, what we have as Nigeria today is still what we have as Nigeria. We only broke them into component parts that by creating more states. But Nigeria is still Nigeria. Why is it that in those days we were able to take off action against insecurity? We could travel. I school in Gombe, then part of Bauchi State, but now on its own. That is where I went to technical college. Around 1 a.m. in the night, we will leave Gombe to Meduguri. We will arrive in Meduguri very late. No problem. Sometimes when we are going, our vehicle will break down. We will bring our car stereo and begin to play uh, disco on the road to while the vehicle is being repaired. Nobody was afraid. What has gone wrong? The normal reaction is no longer constant. It has changed. So when it changes, then there's going to be a reflection of that change. If it is a positive change, it will reflect positively on society. But if it's a negative change, it's going to reflect negatively on the society. That is what we are seeing now. 
And then two, in the educational sector, when a lawyer makes a mistake, somebody will die and go to prison. When a doctor makes a mistake, somebody will die. When an engineer makes a mistake, a building will collapse and people will die. But when a teacher makes a mistake, nobody dies immediately. But children yet unborn are going to suffer from that mistake. That is what we are seeing in Nigeria today. There's collapse in the educational system. There's collapse in the social system. There's collapse in the economic system. There's collapse in the political system. So there's collapse in the religious system. Every system that's supposed to build this country has collapsed. So what do the individuals are finding ways for themselves? Some are taken to banditry. Some are taken to, to uh, uh, terrorism. Some are taken to yahoo yahoo. Some are taken to economic fraud. Different things are going on in the country. What is the way the normal reaction has changed? If this thing is to be restored so that Nigeria will thrive economically, socially, that our economy will be strong, large, competitive, and then technologically enabled, something must be done to insecurity. Okay, we'll come back to that. All right. Mr. Um, Gentleman, I may go. Uh, this is like a recurring decimal. Just when you think that this has happened, um, those kidnapped are released. And something never before seen, or maybe have, we've seen it before, but uh, it, it's something we can't just imagine could happen at this time. I mean, the Okwama killings took Nigerians by the storm and sent shocking waves all across the country, all across the nation. But we have, from some of our investigation, that that's an issue that has been building up over the years, but some proactive measures were not taken to tackle it. I'd like to get a perspective along those lines. Well, thank you very much, Tony. First, let me congratulate you. I got to know a few days ago that you are now a doctor. <laughs> you have acquired a PhD. Congratulations, my boy. Thank you. That's, That's good. very good. Um, talking of the insecurity, whatever we want to use, whatever we want to do, you must remember that we have grown so much in this country that the government is unable to cater for everybody. The population has grown so much and we have no job for our teenage youths. And many of our youths are not even ready to do any job because they want to get rich. Money has come. Remember in the 1970s when Gawan came, oh, so much money, we don't know what to do with money because he didn't have the capacity. If he had the capacity at that time, he could have built a beautiful country for us. Now we are in trouble. So many youths everywhere. What are we going to do? The solution is we have to beg <laughs> because now we have been overwhelmed. Who are we begging? We are begging the bandits. <laughs> now, some, some, look, some states, in the, no, maybe you are not aware, bandits are taking over half of their states. We don't have solution to them. We have been overwhelmed. A few days ago, uh, 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 Tinubu invited Gumi for discussion. And Nigerians were crying. How do you cry? When we cannot solve our problem, they have overwhelmed us. Look at what happened in Okwama. Isn't that a shame? To take your own gun to shoot a soldier man? Who has come for peace? Wherever a soldier stands, it's for peace. Wherever a policeman stands, it's for peace. You can shoot such government officials. So it, it's very sad. We are overwhelmed in this country. And the only way is what Tinubu is doing. Let's call Gumi because he sees the day and the night. Let's discuss with him. Let's appeal to him. Please, we don't want this problem to continue. What can we do? Can we, we cannot divide Nigeria into two. That's what Bishop said. Nigeria remains Nigeria. Please, but we want peace in this country. We now live in fear. Anybody who doesn't live in fear is not in Nigeria. So that's why in those states, for example, we, we thank the government there. The, the, relatively, there is peace here. And that's what the government has put in place. So, Tinubu should be so thank you for agreeing to discuss with Gumi. I am not an advocate of discussing with bandits. But now we are aware, so we can discuss with them. Please don't kill me, don't kill us, don't kill our children. What can we do? Go and meet your bandit brothers and sisters. Let them tell you what they want. Okay. So, I mean, again, what are you talking of? The, the fall of Naira and... Uh, yeah, no, I'll come back to that later. Uh, uh, Bishop Sadolo, you, you've been smiling while uh, Pastor Mego was uh, uh, making his presentation. But I know that there a lot of negative reactions greeted the conversation between Mr. President and Sheikh Gumi. Because for some people, you don't negotiate with terrorists. You don't negotiate with evildoers. You go head on and deal decisively with these bad guys. That's the language they understand. I'd like to get a perspective on that. 
You see, that is where we are making mistake. We have a law. That law is written for the purpose to guide every Nigeria. And they say the law is not a respecter of anybody. Be you the president, be you the cleaner, be you the mechanic, the apprentice, the schoolboy. We are all called to know the law and obey it. And we are told in law that ignorance is not an excuse. Oh, I don't know that it's against the law. It's not an excuse. You are duty bound to know. I have told my brother while we were there that a reconciled enemy is uh, always an enemy. That you don't buy AK-49 and give to your reconciled enemy. He will use it against you. So if government now begin to negotiate with bandits and begin to pay them, you are only encouraging those that have made up their mind to remain humble, to remain fearful, to laws and regulation that it does not matter, that strength is might, that you are going to fight and kill will make you to be recognized. So instead of saying, let me respect the law, I will do extraordinary thing to make the nation recognize me. That's what Nigerians are doing, in, those in authority. Because I don't know why in this country where we have security agents and intelligence gathering, Gumi should know where the bandits stay more than the security agents. Yes, it does. It's, it's a shameful thing. They have been telling us, bring money, let's go and settle them. We have seen him in video with them. And nobody asks questions. First and foremost, uh, Sonny Duke, we do respect. In my local government, between Okogbo and Obokoniro, about four days ago, five men came out of the bush with AK-49 and attacked one young man that is driving SUV um, Lezos. The one came out of the bush, facing with the gun and said, stop. And the man decided to run back, only to see four others at the back. They opened fire on him. In my local government here. The other day I told you that 20 people have been kidnapped in a bank. Right? Yes. Now, if that is the fear we have, now they are registered uh, nomad as a, a vigilante. CAC have registered them. They were not registered before. They carry gun and parade it without anybody asking them question. How did you buy this gun? Now that they have been registered by CAC, then they will do extra thing to anybody. Okay, let's, let's not jump into conclusion with that. Um, but I said absolutely. Yeah. You, 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 you are a veteran journalist. We, we saw in the dark days of uh, the militancy in the Niger Delta region all the efforts out you know, that were put in just to address the problem. But from the Okwama killings, the feeling is, is like, uh, you know, there is a seeming arms build-up yes, in the region. Yes, and then uh, the, the absence of uh, crisis in the region doesn't really mean that all is well. I mean, going by what has happened with this Okwama killing, I, I don't know what to make of this. Well, uh, basically the Constitution has guided us that the security and welfare should be the principal aim of government, section 14, 2. But now, there's no security, there's no welfare. I'm sure that the government is, is insensitive enough. Otherwise, a part cannot be greater than a whole. A group of people cannot be greater than the government. We have it in law. If you do something through another person, you have done it yourself. So if somebody were to be arming the terrorists or using the terrorists, he is pretty much facile liable himself. So the government should rise up to its responsibility, secure the welfare of the people. When we talk of uh, blowing population, 
We are not yet more than India or China, so we are not ungovernable or too big to be a country. We are one country, no tribes, and talk to a different. So this is a clarion call on governments. Whoever is in the leadership, he has the paraphernalia, he has the men, materials, trained to curb this growing tendency. It's not insurmountable. If there is a terrorist, any adherent, any supporter, openly or secretly, is aiding and abetting terrorism, he should not be negotiated with. The law is there. Charge him to court. Let him be punished to serve as deterrent to others. I'm sure it was done before and there was peace, but now that we are undecided, policies are taken over everything. The person of the person, who the person is, if he's too big to be guided by policies, we are lukewarm, we call him for tete a tete, we should not be. So let us fight this. Anybody armed unofficially, anybody killing unjustifiably, should be tried and punished as a deterrent to others. All right, uh, Ron Kamitin, mm -hmm. share with us your thoughts uh, from the foundation that you established in this conversation in terms of actions, activities, policy initiatives that needs to be adopted to deal with these, you know, uh, menace of insecurity. I know that uh, there's literally no month, no year, no quarter that passes without having a security conference and all of those recommendations that are made, we don't see that being translated into tangible, feelable action that will meet this challenge in the board. So what are your key recommendations? Okay. Um, <clears throat> our country is a country who knows what is good for them, but they depart from it and go and do the things that are not good for the country. The president of America, Clinton, he said when a man depart from the path of self-destruction, it is not cowardice, it is common sense. It is time Nigeria should learn from their security architecture. What kind of security architecture are we saying? Put me on the road, begin to search boot. When I get there, the go slow is so much, I take on bypass. I will cut off that checkpoint. <laughs> I'm on my way. This old thing, let me tell you. You see, God told Moses, lift up your hands, and Israel will be winning the war. Moses' hand became heavy, he dropped it down. What happened to Israel? They were losing the war. So technology was devised in order to sustain Moses' hand. So we tell you that technology is the in thing that will remove his security. The Benin say any river that does not head toward the sea normally becomes a brook. Yes. And during the dry season, it dries up. Any country that is not heading toward technological development, that country will definitely will become a brook and will dry up. So let's come to insecurity in Nigeria. You see, we are talking of insecurity now. The Nigerian police is the basics that we know. They are men and women charged with public uh, safety. They are supposed to be doing this work, not the military. Except in some cases in which those people are so heavily armed, then the military will be invited in, both the Navy, the Air Force, and the Army. Are you not aware in this country, during the fight, against Boko Haram, that the F Air Force will be doing their own. The Navy will be doing their own. The Nigerian army will be doing... There is this array, and the center cannot hold. So, therefore, there need to be a total reorganization of the Nigerian security forces. Let me give you an example. When Anini was here, terrorizing people, the police could not do anything. He went to the Federal Executive Council. He knew the ID was embarrassed by the then president of Nigeria, uh, uh, Ibrahim Babangida. He said, where is Anini? That's the height. What did he do? He came back, removed the police commissioner, brought a son of his soil, brought him down. And within some few weeks, Anini was caught and all his guns were eradicated. Why? Because the person he brought know the secret. He took a leaf from the bush and put in his mouth. <laughs> That leave he went after them. As far as that leave remained there, oh he was able to crush the enemy. Now, why can't we apply that in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. All police officers should serve in their state. Let me tell you one secret. Tribalism has negative value. But when we talk of tribalism, it seems it's negative, negative. No, it has a positive value. When tribalism is with, among a people of the same tribe, it drives them. 
is a will to achieve. They move on. They engage any obstacle because this is my place. So I, I, that is the obstacle. The police should be reorganized. All police officers should start in their state. When they get to their state, they should serve in their local government. When they get to their local government, they should serve in their ward. Then you come and see changes that will occur. All right. Um, is, that a is that a recommendation for state police, as it were, by Star Meko? Well, the state yes, police yes. is Should state we... police is growing already. Yes, it's growing with Ebube, growing with Boho uh, in the west, growing with our vigilante. It's already growing, and uh, we will get at a point. The state government recently uh, even met. And but but I, let me just pick something from what the bishop said. I'm yeah. glad yeah. as bishop that said it that if you put a leaf in your mouth, <laughs> you get all the bandits together. Yeah, could we recommend that too? Federal government that they should go on for that particular league. No, but I don't think <laughs> just in a literary sense of yeah. domesticating this strategy no, 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 no. to address that the problem of insecurity. No, he said if you don't love, yes. don't put it where you are. He just put gave, an example, your gave an example. Yeah, yes, I gave an example of the Anini saga, how it was addressed using a local man who knew the terrain. It's, who it's, knew, it's yes. a party yes. that yes. arrested that's, Anini. That's what we're saying. <laughs> yes. So, so he didn't put any leaf yes. in his mouth. Yes. He yes. walked there at night to get Anini and yeah. they got him. Right. Right. So, so, can I explain yeah, that? Can, okay. Let me explain. Yes. Okay. What I mean, putting leaf in your mouth. Mm. Your mouth is short, your pocket is short. That's what it is. Mm. You go after what you want. Yeah. But when your mouth is open to take drink and this and talk anyhow, and your pocket is open to receive on derived revenue, then you cannot get your target. Uh, that is what I'm saying. Okay, so that's explicit. No, no, no. So, no, no it's, it's okay. Let's leave that until when we get there. Okay, okay, so what I'm saying is that this insecurity needs direct attack on them. But what I'm saying now is that it started about 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. It's been there. We are now overwhelmed. With, they have taken over. We, even our children are taking to Savisa Forest. Up to today, we can't find them. Up to today. With soldiers there, uh, police there, DSS there, we still cannot get our children for over eight, ten years. Some of them, are, we, you see, we cannot face faceless bandits. The bandits are faceless. They come at night, they do what they want to do, they go back. But my worry is that we are supposed to have drone in Aso Rock. We are supposed to have the boundaries of Nigeria. Right in Aso Rock, you could press your, 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 your button and something will happen. I, I don't know whether those things are functioning because we have been told that they have been bought. We have bought so many helicopters. Super to come. Super to come. We have bought them. They are in Aso Rock. They are not being used. Whether they are functioning or they are not functioning is another problem. Because we have not seen, we have really not seen where they have used those things that were purchased with Nigerian money. We have not seen where the helicopter has come to land, where the bank. Okay, the other day they said, oh, uh, in Kaduna, where they took about 200 of our children. Nobody saw them. And there's no forest in Kaduna. It's Savannah. You can see two or one mile away. They took all these children to Zamfara. Where did they pass? What vehicle did they use? And in broad daylight. So why the Nigerian we always say in a local parlance, if you see something, say something. But our people there in the north kept quiet, they saw something, they didn't say anything. So the insecurity is difficult to fight right now because we have moved away. Therefore, what is the solution? Let's negotiate with them. Okay. Um Bishop Osadolo Chair. You see, the problem is this. Abacha told us truth. The Nigerians are not ready to investigate that truth. That when insecurity lasts for more than 24 hours, government have That's hand in it. it. How did we get to where we are today? How did this insecurity start? Who masterminded them? Has Nigerians and those in government asked questions? Are they spirits? If they are not, even if they are spirits, there are also men that are spirits. Men that are spirits that can be sent after them. But unfortunately, it is now a business where people can make billions and trillions. And because it's not a business, everybody in government throw away their face because some persons are benefiting from it. 
Otherwise, how much does it cost to purchase a drone for surveillance? We have the bill. How much does it cost for us to hire a, a helicopter parading all these areas? And they're not like my brother says, it's a savannah. You can from here see five kilometers away, no tree. <laughs> and that is why there is no, no perimeter fence in the borders of the north. I have advocated, let them build a fence and a river, construct a river, run the borders of the north, put um, these um, animals in it, a uh, shark and others. <laughs> So that all this problem will stop. Oh my God. A lot of the persons that are perpetrating this evil are imported from outside Nigeria. When, you, when they catch some of them, they don't even speak outside, they don't speak our own type of Fulani. They are French. So if this is what immigration have discovered, what effort have they made to help us to curb it? Because some persons in government, in immigration, in the army, in the air force, in the navy, are benefiting from it. If not, it's not. It's not difficult. Yes, yes. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. There's no way you can substantiate that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we use the Gumi as a test case. Mm -hmm. Who have been going? Who have been going to negotiate? Who knows where they are? So if he had been claiming he knows where they are to negotiate, mm -hmm. we should be able to tell us how do they if, connect. If, if you take that as a statement, as, I mean, that statement on its surface, the federal government recently released a list of um, exactly. terror responses. Exactly. For me, it wasn't concluded. Yes. I'm sure federal government, with all the uh, arrays of security agencies, would have done background check on Gumi to know his level of involvement to have perhaps listed him amongst those who are terrorism, terrorism financial, but that didn't happen. Yes, you see, like my brother said, that in Nigeria the law is meant for the poor. And the rich is not covered under our uh, legal jurisprudence. No, that's not correct. That's the interpretation oh. we are getting now by what is happening. Otherwise, it can't happen any other place in, Nigeria, in the world. Okay. That somebody will claim I can reach them to appease to them. Then you'll be able to tell the world, how did you know them? Where did you know they are? All right, uh, Vice Adam Salim. Yes, yeah, yes. What, what's your take on uh, finding lasting solution to this challenge of insecurity, particularly what's happening in the north? Uh, the co panelists, the bishop, try to advocate for state police. Police is the exclusive list defense, diplomacy. Finance. The police is a semi quasi aspect of defense. You cannot localize it. If you localize it, Yoruba policemen will be fighting Igbo policemen. Hausa policemen will be fighting Yoruba policemen. They will all be loyal to their governors. But many governors are already advocating. No, this. not so openly. Police. They are covertly. No, openly. openly. Even openly, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's better you still national as it were. That way we'll get results. We're not not that results. Really no. should go but at the national level, are we getting results result. as much? But as localizing it to go to and become a tribal policeman is not the answer. It to be in your community, to be in your uh, and therefore you'll yeah. be fighting yeah. outside yeah. policemen if you are sent to no. Zaria. No. But, but the, the recommendation that he made was that uh -huh. if you are from a do state and you're a police officer, you should go and serve. You should serve in a do state. Uh, then you should serve local government. You should serve in your local government. Those, you serve in your community. those from worry will be natives of worry. Yes, those yes. Money yes. that's the 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 that's current insecurity challenges bedeviling the country where in the most parts of the north uh, bandits are holding sway, uh, kidnapping at will, destroying lives and properties. But we can also look at the flip side where 
security agencies have also made giant strides. Uh, I mean, terminating and annihilating some of the most notorious uh, terrorists or bandits in the north. But the challenge is that many of these guys, they build a leadership base. So one man is gone, maybe 10 takes over. So we we'll just want to keep praying and supporting our security agencies as they engage these bad guys and do their best to um, reduce their activities and the influence and activities and impact that they're making in the northern part of the country. We hope that um, the families of those soldiers who lost their lives in the coma killings will continue to pray for God to comfort them and comfort them. And uh, the federal government has made some giant remarks and actions to appreciate those families. Unfortunately, no matter what is done, they're never going to come back again. Sure. And those scars and those pains will continue to be in the hearts and minds of their loved ones that they left behind. But we hope that the security agencies will expect action and uh, redouble their efforts to bring the perpetrators to justice. That's the best way to actually assuage the feelings of family members who, uh, whose loved ones you know, lost their lives in these actions by these uh, bad guys. Thank you.